Okay, three, two, one, we're gonna go. All right, great stuff. We're starting just a little, little bit early today. So I want to welcome all of our QGIS Open Day fans um, to today's Open Day. I see that there's lots of excitement around this talk. Um, thank you, Abdul, for your comment that you're especially looking forward to the future um, processing provider discussions. So that's very exciting. Um, and I think, you know, this Open Day, we really have a great line up for everybody, whoever wants to learn more about plugins. We've got such a range of things that we can add to QGIS, and I think it's very powerful to learn about these things. So our first talk of the day is, of course, um, with Hans von der Quast, and I'd really thank you for returning to the QGIS Open Day. You're really one of our stalwarts, and it's awesome. Um, and he will be talking about the processing provider plugins. Um, so he'll discuss sort of the, multiple, the multitude of tools available, um, specifically in the QGIS Processing Toolbox, but through the provider plugins. And then he's also going to be giving some creator tips um, and just generally giving us a great overview of these different tools. So it just leaves me to hand over to you, Hans. Thanks, Amy. Great to be here again. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to start my screen sharing. So um, the presentation uh, that I'm going to give uh, was also given last week at Phosphor GNL, but I made some uh, little modifications because QGIS uh, also evolves in the time frame of one week. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, I got new uh, insights uh, during the conference. So I, uh, I'm happy to share with you uh, these slides, which will be about uh, QGIS processing provider plugins, but also provides a general introduction to uh, the topic of uh, plugins at our uh, plugin festival today. Uh, so I hope that helps you. It, there's something in it for, for all of us, like for new users, for a bit more uh, advanced users and for developers. So very short introduction about myself. I'm a physical geographer and uh, I work at IHC Delft Institute for Water Education as a senior lecturer in GIS and uh, spatial data management. Of course, uh, advocate of uh, open source uh, software for, uh, for geography. Um, and together with Kurt Menke, I wrote the book QGIS for Hydrological Applications. And as we speak, uh, we're making updates and there will be a second edition coming up soon. So that's a little bit of a secret I want to share with you. Uh, of course, with all kinds of new things that uh, uh, are being developed in uh, QGIS. So that it will be up to date and some workflows will be uh, more efficient, I would say. Oh, that's so exciting. <laughs> yeah, also looking forward to that. <laughs> oh, brilliant. So let's go to the presentation. Um, so today will be about plugins. And uh, there are many different types of plugins. And you can easily get lost if you are not aware about uh, these different types of plugins. So there are core plugins that come when you install plugin, come, uh, install QGIS that comes uh, with QGIS. But there are also third party plugins that you install through the plugins manager. And these can be divided in uh, GUI plugins, so graphical user interface plugins, and uh, processing uh, plugins. And there's also a category of experimental plugins, but that's more the way that it's uh, uh, accessed through the plugins manager. So when you go to the plugins manager, just have to wait this, uh, just to uh, restart. So, well, anyways, here you see if you go to the plugins manager and you go to the installed ones and a fresh install that you see that uh, it, it has already some plugins installed for you. Those are the core plugins. Just uh, wait until it to, goes back to the beginning. Okay, there it is. So you can find all the plugins, obviously, in the plugins menu, open the plugins manager. And if you go to installed, you find the core plugins that are already installed. And an example of that is the processing plugin. If that is unchecked, you uh, might have noticed that you don't have some uh, menu items in the raster menu and you can't open the processing uh, toolbox. You can also install plugins from zip. And you can also check the box here to uh, show the experimental plugins. And there are different repositories than the official one that you can uh, add here and that's sometimes needed. But where do they go? Many beginners get a bit confused if after installing a plugin, where, where does it go? Where can I find then the plugin? Uh, some plugins, the GUI plugins, they come with their own user interface. They have a, their own panels and uh, menus and screens like this one. This is the PDOC services plugin, which uh, gives access to uh, open data sets of the Netherlands. Here we see ITC in Enschede, where the conference was last week. And uh, you can simply use this 
uh, interface to add data, open data to your uh, map canvas. But sometimes it goes to a menu. This is a very popular, probably one of the most popular plugins, the Quick Map Services plugin. Uh, to get uh, backdrops to your uh, map canvas. And uh, after installing, it goes to the web menu. And after changing some settings, you have even extra services added to the, to the menu. There are even plugins that add uh, features to the browser panel. This is an example from uh, Mergin, uh, which is the uh, cloud service. If you want to use QGIS uh, for making uh, field data collection uh, apps uh, with the input app, you can synchronize QGIS with, uh, through the Mergin plugin with the Mergin cloud and then to the input app. But today we're going to focus mostly on this one when after installing the plugin, it adds uh, tools to the processing toolbox. And you see here with the QGIS logo, the core processing tools. So they come automatically with your uh, installation. Uh, that's also for GDAL. Uh, but you see here some other icons and those are from processing providers. And some come with uh, QGIS uh, when you install it and others have to be activated through a processing provider plugin. And that can be a little bit confusing. And there's also a discussion about how this uh, evolves in future versions. But let's first focus what it does. A processing provider plugin adds algorithms, as you can see, to the processing toolbox. Here we see it for the new uh, PC raster tools uh, plugin. And you can use these tools also in the graphical uh, modeler because it really integrates in this uh, framework of uh, pr the processing toolbox. So here you see a little example of uh, doing a calculation with uh, the AccuFlux uh, function for uh, flow accumulation with the PC raster tools plugin. So we define here some inputs, some rasters. And then under algorithms, we of course see the core um, tools, but also the ones from the processing provider plugins. And that's really powerful. It means you can mix the processing provider plugins also from third party, different third party ones with the QGIS ones to create your, uh, your workflows and your graphical models. So here you see in the animation, the example. So that's what you can uh, create. And that means you can also do batch processing. It will add Python classes, but a processing provider plugin can also add the other things that other plugins can do, like adding those uh, menus. Here's an example of mixing different processing providers uh, in a graphical model. So here again, you see the little icon of the PC Raster Tools plugin. But here, if you look very carefully, there is the Grass plugin. And the combination of these different tools ends up, well, you start with a DEM and a Strata order threshold. And in the end, you get catchments, subcatchments, and uh, channels in the vector format uh, derived. And the user can just fill in the menu, and it will uh, run smoothly because of everything being in this uh, framework of the processing toolbox. Now I want to um, point out that there are, are some uh, issues or some discussions at the, the moment. So you might have noticed in recent installations of QGIS that if you use the Saga tools that you get this uh, warning. So something I want to point out for developers if uh, uh, and, and users, they, they sometimes misunderstand it. A warning is not an error. So if Python gives a warning or QGIS gives a warning or you see a warning in the log, that's not an error. Uh, errors are called error, as, as you can also see in the screenshot. So that, that means you really need to, <laughs> to take action. Uh, but let's first focus on this warning. Um, wh what happened is that uh, QGIS updated the version of uh, Saga that's being provided. For a long time, we used uh, an older version, 2.3, a long-term release of Saga. But uh, many users and developers were eager to use also the newer versions. So at some point, uh, QGIS upgraded uh, Saga. And in the new installers, you can only install uh, the new version. But there are some uh, challenges there that uh, the newest uh, versions uh, give uh, issues or have differences with uh, the previous versions. And the key is in the descriptor files where uh, some of the settings are different. Or like in this case, where you want to do the, um, the catchment delineation, you can use the upslope tool from Saga. And you will get this error that the tool needs a graphical user interface. And then you think, yeah, well, I have the QGIS user interface. But it's actually referring to the Saga user interface. So that's tricky. And uh, because of these tricky things, the 
third party uh, tools are of course uh, developed by a third party and it is quite a load for the QDIS developers to update that uh, those tools also so the idea was to uh, to drop these third party uh, processing provider plugins and uh, have them maintained as a plugin by their own maintainers instead of the core team being uh, involved in that too much and there's another uh, QEP I have to explain that that's uh, so for Python, you have PEP, the Python enhancement proposals. For QGIS, we have the QGIS enhancement proposals, QEP. You can find them in GitHub. Uh, and these are really nice discussions where you can learn a lot about uh, the strategy and why uh, things uh, need to be changed in a future version. So this one is even referring to version 4 of QGIS. And um, yeah, this is also referring to remove non-native processing providers. And we see here in the change log of version 3.22, which just came out a few days ago, um, that uh, yeah, that the non-native processing providers uh, went into independent plugins. And for now, they are in, installed with QGIS, or you need to uh, activate those. But in the future, you can expect that they will not be automatically installed uh, in your uh, QGIS installation, and you need to install the external uh, plugins. Another advantage is that uh, it gives an equal playing ground uh, to other processing provider plugins, and there are so many. So in my world where I use different of these, of course, users find it easier to always grab the ones that are provided with QGIS, such as Saga and Grass, which are really great. But there are so many more things around. So you can also install, install the uh, R processing provider plugin, use PC Raster, Last Tools, or Whitebox Tools, which is really cool. And how do you install that? So this focuses a bit on the users. Uh, first, you need to install uh, the third-party software because it doesn't come with QGIS. And here you see the example for uh, PC Raster, how you do that. You can use the OSGO4W, set up under Windows, look for PC Raster, and then you install it. Uh, and on uh, Linux and uh, Mac, you can use uh, Conda to install uh, both QGIS and uh, PC Raster if you want to use it. The second step is to install the processing provider plugin. And here we see an example uh, also for PC Raster. After uh, installing the software, you can install the plugin. And uh, this plugin will check if you have installed uh, PC Raster and it will give an, give an error uh, if it's not installed. And after installing, you will find then the tools here. This can work slightly different for different uh, processing provider plugins. Because for some others, so this is an optional step, so it depends, you need to configure the processing provider in the processing toolbox. So let's have a look here in the animation at the R processing provider plugin. Note that there's always a homepage link where you can find documentation. Very important if you install these plugins, read the documentation, and see what you need to do. Uh, I, I now frequently get questions like, hey, I installed the PC Raster plugin, but it doesn't do anything. So here you see these providers in the settings of the processing toolbox and you need to set the paths to where uh, R in this case is installed. So you need to, prior to using it, uh, install uh, software from R and then link it in the processing toolbox to, uh, to these executables um, in order to use it. So just because they went a bit quick, see that again happening here. So install the plugin, then you'll have all the features already but you need to go to the settings of the processing toolbox and there under providers you need to then configure where QGIS can find uh, the tools and the scripts and other things that are needed. So a very important step. Some good practice for users. Uh, the more plugins you install the slower that QGIS starts and uh, that makes sense, it needs to load all these things. But uh, a solution for that is to create profiles for different combinations of uh, plugins. So if you want to work with uh, remote sensing tools and use the SCP uh, plugin and uh, some other plugins, you can simply create uh, a profile. Here you can see that you go to the settings menu, user profiles, and create a new profile. You can make as many as you want, and then just install the plugins that you need in uh, that profile. And you can easily switch to different profiles by here going to user profile and then choose the profile that you need. It also stores your language settings and other global settings of QGIS. Also a pro tip, if you get strange errors, 
then always make a new uh, profile and that often will uh, solve your problem because it will start with a clean installation of QGIS. Let's now move from the user to the developer. Let's say uh, you have an interesting GIS tool that you want to make available. You get inspired now and you want other users to use it through QGIS. Then I think the first step, and this is, I'm not a developer, but I went through this with the PC Raster Tools plugin. So it's a bit with my more user-based knowledge, how to, to explain this, but maybe there are developers around who also have great tips. I think first step is to check if there's a way to, uh, to access the tool from uh, QGIS already. Is the Python package already included in QGIS that you use with your tool? Can it easily be installed with pip? Is the installer already available through OSGO4W or can it easily be uh, included? Or do you have your own installer or can you create it? Or do you need to run it from a Conda environment, which is also a great way to use different Python packages uh, and um, in combination with QGIS. And then it is strongly advised that the plugin should work like QGIS platform independently. So uh, you will get uh, more users and more appreciation if it works on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. Then you can first test with making your scripts so in the toolbox you can uh, add a template or use the template for processing scripts which comes with a lot of information already where you need to fill in the gaps and modify it in such a way that uh, it executes your uh, tool uh, i think that's a, an easy step so try with an easy one and see if it runs and if it doesn't get uh, give errors that it can't find your tool so here you see it again the Python icon and then choose uh, create script from the template. After creating some of these tools, you can then uh, share it with a wider audience already using the QGIS resource sharing plugin. That's what I uh, did. So you can install the QGIS resource sharing plugin and then uh, you can add your repository if you go to settings and then you can click uh, at repository, but you need to copy from GitHub your uh, repository. There's good documentation on how to set up these resource sharing uh, repositories. Paste the GitHub uh, link there after giving it a name. Don't forget to add .git, otherwise it will not work. You can add authentication if needed. And then you will find there uh, the scripts, and then you can install the script collection and uh, other users can also do that who have the, that uh, GitHub link and then uh, they can test your uh, tools and they will then be added to uh, the scripts section. So it's not yet a plugin, but it's just for other users to easily test what you made and get some uh, feedback. And you can open the scripts and see then how it works. So you can also take this as an example if you want to develop your own. So all these hundred scripts of PC Raster, the magic is done in this part where the Python code is executed to uh, do this Acuflux tool, for example. Then if you're satisfied with how that all works, you can uh, create a plugin. If you are a very advanced developer, you probably want to develop it from scratch. And um, there you can use, uh, uh, yeah, uh, the knowledge that you have or, or take an existing one from, from GitHub and modify that. There's also uh, a, a wizard that you can use from the plugin builder plugin, very funny name for a plugin. And if you install the plugin builder plugin, then you can choose at some point in the wizard what kind of plugin it is. Uh, it's a, the template to, uh, to load and you can see that you can choose here the processing provider. Another solution, that's the one that I uh, used, is to hire a developer and uh, I can recommend uh, experienced ones that already developed processing pl provider plugins. There are several ones. Uh, in my case, it was uh, Niall Dawson who helped me out to, uh, to publish the uh, uh, PC Raster Tools plugin. And this is an easy workflow if you do it like this, because you have done a lot of prototyping and it will not take too much time for the developer to uh, turn it into a plugin and push it to the official plugins repository of uh, QGIS. I had some questions from, uh, from users like, hey, why are you adding tools that already exist with other processing providers? I can also do catchment delineation in uh, GRAS or in Saga. 
Well, I think that's not uh, a bug, but it's a feature. <laughs> it is. Uh, I think the nice thing about open source is that you have so many choices to uh, uh, use in your workflow. And um, it's because the algorithms can be different. Uh, there are different uh, theories behind it, uh, different implementations. Uh, the performance can be different. Some can calculate very fast. Uh, others are might be slower. It's also about robustness. We've seen these errors with Saga that pop up now. Maybe other tools are a nice fallback uh, option. Uh, also the user friendliness or the amount of parameters for your uh, tool, uh, like filling the sinks, which, which we use a lot in hydrology, uh, can be, uh, there are already several options in Saga. There is in, in Grass an option with the PC Raster Tools plugin has uh, many more parameters to control how the filling uh, is done. So it's great to have all these choices. What about the performance? Well, there's uh, that that could be in discussion. I don't think you will use the desktop uh, GIS software uh, to achieve the highest uh, calculation speeds. And especially if you use these processing provider tools, uh, they use wrappers. And uh, I think, uh, especially for example, with uh, PC raster tools, they use the PC raster package, or if you use uh, Grass, then you it comes with its own whole scripting tool set, which is much more efficient. And even if you're uh, proficient in uh, Python, that's the preferred way if you want to make a very speedy uh, tool. But then with a processing provider uh, plugin, you can still add those tools also to QGIS. So I'm expecting now, uh, hopefully in the near future, that there will be whole uh, PC raster models added to uh, as a plugin to QGIS, uh, which then use the, the Python stuff of PC raster and will run uh, fast. But I think if you do the, the click by click way of your, your workflow, that maybe um, performance is a bit less important. That doesn't mean that it needs to take hours uh, per tool that you use. That's not really what I mean. But it's not that high competition about performance if we use a graphical user interface. So some conclusions here. Um, I think, well, we know that the QGIS processing provider plugins are the preferred way of adding geospatial analysis tools to QGIS. And it enables us to use these tools uh, in the toolbox and the model builder, which gives uh, great opportunities. Uh, it adds value to the processing toolbox. And it's really great that QGIS at this point is um, also an integration platform for many GIS uh, tools around. And I think there's many more that we can integrate. So if you have open source GIS tools, um, or you develop those, then consider adding them to the processing toolbox as QGIS processing provider plugins. Now, if you want to find more information about that, I have a YouTube channel and uh, nowadays you're used to using QR codes to show uh, that you are not uh, contagious or whatever. So this QR code will uh, lead you to the YouTube channel. Uh, I point out here a few uh, useful ones. That if you do this whole um, analysis workflows with Saga uh, tools, uh, then there's a workaround for using the upslope area tool uh, with that error that I showed to you. Uh, also, a video about installing QGIS with the old dependencies if you want your old workflows to still work. Uh, there's a video on how to use white box tools in QGIS, how to install that processing provider plugin. Uh, same for R. This is about installing PC Raster, Saga, and Grass tools using the, the newer uh, installers. And uh, this is a nice example of how powerful it is to, to have these extra tools to derive all subcatchments uh, from a DEM using the PC Raster Tools plugin. So that was my uh, presentation. So back to Amy. Awesome. Um, thanks so much, Hans. That was absolutely fantastic. Um, I have just one sort of question. I don't know if you can answer it, but it just popped into my head. So why in the newer version of QGIS was the decision made that you should download those plugins instead of them being sort of core plugins or built in? Is there a specific reason that they didn't in include them? Um, does Q just run faster? I'm just sort of wanted to know. The main issue is the maintenance issue. So um, you can um, think of that QGS has its own pace of development, but also all these uh, other tools, these third-party tools have their own pace of development. And uh, if you want to update something from the third party in QGIS, then also a lot of things at, on the side of QGIS need to be 
uh, updated. And there is where you can get these glitches that certain tools doesn't don't work anymore uh, or not work as expected. And therefore, uh, from the developer's point of view, it is much better uh, to move the responsibility to uh, to the third party uh, and the, the, the plugin developers. Um, so I think that's the main uh, issue of moving them out of the core. And I, th I think that's a good decision. All right, all right. So a totally practical decision makes sense. Yep. <laughs> all right, and then um, just in our comment section, I see, um, hi, Wendy Adrian, who's saying that she's very excited for this open day and these sessions, as well as um, Kennedy Jomakela. Um, and I just wanted to say that I think we should start making some cute just tongue twisters because the plugin builder plugin for plugin builders building plugins would be great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Q just plugin tongue twisters. We should put, write a book. <laughs> All right. I'm just going to give our audience a little bit of time if they have any questions for Hans. Um, and I know Hans, you'd like to finish a little bit early um, so that you can go on to your introduction for your students starting the year. We always call that O week here. So I think that's very exciting. So I'll just have about five minutes so people can sort of just ask any questions they have and then we'll let you go. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, what I'm also curious about, uh, so we've developed this PC Raster Tools plugin and I think it's really nice to see use cases. Um, mm. Uh, that's something I found out after developing the plugin. That's always great, and it's a tool that you are looking forward to. And then uh, you you can use it, and I use it in my education. I now also uh, turned my new course that will start next week at IG Delft uh, using the the plugin. So really using the latest uh, stuff and work around with the Saga issues that we have at the moment. Uh, but I didn't realize how interesting it is for having such a thing developed to see use cases. And I think there's a great occasion now in November where we have the 30-day map challenge to mm -hmm. see maybe some use cases of, of using these tools or from other processing providers um, and post your nice uh, map results for the 30-day uh, map challenge. What about I think that? That would be awesome. Maybe in next um, month's um, open day, we'll have a session just on people showing off their cool use cases and their maps. I think that would that be sounds great. really cool. Oh, that's a very good idea for a theme. <laughs> Maybe we can ask Topi to join and, and give a bit of a background of the 30 day map challenge. That's a very, very good idea. I like that idea. I will take that down. Um, that course that you mentioned, is it open for anyone to do? How does the course work? How can people link to it? Yes, um, most of the things that I develop are, uh, are open access. So there's the GIS Open Courseware platform, gsopencourseware.org. And uh, I've posted it yesterday on, uh, on Twitter, uh, but this course is, uh, is freely available. It's under the advanced QGIS tutorials, and then it's the last tutorial. I've posted it earlier, but I did some extensions and updates. So it's more complete now, and it also includes a video uh, for the whole, uh, process of uh, catchment delineation. It's only that part of the course that is open. Um, but there's bits and pieces scattered around on GS Open Courseware. Um, mm -hmm. If you're in a rush, you can also watch the, the new video that I posted yesterday on my YouTube channel. Alrighty, and I will um, put some links into the description of this video once obviously the recording has been published to both um, Hans's YouTube channel, which is absolutely amazing. There are loads of fantastic videos there with great tips and tricks. Of course, you know, Hans has so much experience and the best workarounds and the best like, hey, you're being stupid, just do it this way, it's easier, um, little tips. So I think that, you know, it's a really, really great resource to check out. And then I will also get the link to the course from Hans and put it into our video um, description. So last but not least, it's a little bit of an open-ended question, but um, for someone who is actually interested in like future processing um, plugins and developing those, but they're a bit nervous to kind of start looking at things because I know a lot of people can identify the problem they have. They, I don't know, want to, you know, I'm a bird nut, so they want to make a bird map and they have a specific thing about, you know, it, immature birds versus adult birds, blah, blah. They'd actually like to make a plugin that's all about birding. But they know the problem, but they don't necessarily have the skills to start doing that. They don't know where to start. So what is the best place to start and get advice when you want to create a processing plugin? Um, it was also something I ran into. 
um, because you need to find uh, the people who can help you with that <clears throat> if you're not a developer. So um, looking around and uh, being up to date on who does what in the QGIS community, who are the developers, uh, check out who made already similar uh, plugins, reach out to them. And uh, I found that many people are very helpful. Uh, so you can always always discuss that. And I think also a good uh, entry is the, the Telegram channel to find out if people maybe have ideas and Maybe sometimes you find out that somebody already made a plugin for that or that there's an old plugin existing for QGIS 2 that needs an update. So reaching out is really the first step, doing your research, finding people who are uh, interested in that and can give you advice. <laughs> Phone a friend. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, brilliant. All right. So we have a question come up from um, Ali. Um, thanks for the presentation. It was great. Um, is there a screenshot of QGIS modeler using GDEL? and PC raster. Is it public? Could you share it? Thanks for advice <laughs> or, or in, in advance. Um, there's a, a, a model uh, repository of uh, QGIS and there's models posted there. I will, uh, if I have time, that's a bit of the big issue at the moment. <laughs> I will I will add some models there that uh, that use uh, GDAL and PC raster. It's a bit of an open question because you, you're probably looking for an example, but it's very easy to create one. So if you have an idea of a workflow that needs both tools, then just add those uh, processing tools in your graphical modeler and, uh, and if well designed, it will uh, run. Um, so there's completely no issue of mixing uh, the, the GDAL tools or the QGIS tools or CRAS tools with the PC raster tools. Um, yeah, so uh, keep, keep an eye on uh, on updates on uh, on the model uh, model uh, repository uh, where they will be more uh, published soon. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, and then there's another question from Yuri or Jiri. Sorry if I butcher your name. Um, uh, he, They'd like to know um, model builder. Is it something like FME Workbench? Sorry, I'm not an FME user, so I have to admit. Maybe you know Amy. Amy, I don't know. I've never used FME. It's I'm um, very definitely a hardcore QGIS fan. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> no answer to that question. But I mean, generally, model builder is is used to bring all your elements together, and often as a starting point for automate automating processes. So, you know, I I know there are a lot of um, spatial data programs and analysis options that do have something that like what we call model builder or modeler, where you can you know bring in all your elements, all your inputs, all your layers, all your tools, and just make one big picture for want of a better word and run that through so um if that's what fme workbench does then yes absolutely <laughs> yeah i'm sure there are uh, lots of uh, videos on uh, on the graphical modeler in qgis and what it can do and uh, i have some tutorials too about that if you want to have a look you can also export uh the, the model to python code and then modify it uh, so there's a lot of things you can do with uh, the graphical modeler I think it's a nice tool for uh, for prototyping your uh, workflows, and then if you want to really make it into a tool or a plugin, then that would be a logical next step. So that's also a good start if you're going on the plugin building journey. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, I think that is um, all of our questions. I want to thank our awesome viewers for logging in. I know it's quite early, and Hans, I hope you have a fantastic introduction day with your students. Um, in the field, which is even better. Um, unfortunately, in South Africa, it's currently raining, so I won't be going outside today. But I hope it's a really, really awesome day. And um, I can't wait until the next um, QGIS Open Day. And hopefully, we will be seeing you again really soon. <laughs> Thanks, Amy. And uh, enjoy the rest of the, the Open Day. I'm going to watch the recordings afterwards. So looking forward to that. Enjoy. Awesome. Great stuff. Thanks so much, Hans. Cheers.